On July 5th, 2019, I got the privilege of boarding Cunard's 2010 Queen Elizabeth in the Port of Los Angeles here in Port 93. Now, a lot of people, particularly in the ocean liner community, have not taken well to modern Cunard and their cookie cutter Vista class cruise ship design. And I was right along there with them thinking that Cunard had sold out everything that they stood for, while understanding that in order to literally keep afloat, they had to do something. While the likes of the Queen Victoria, Queen Elizabeth, and the new Queen Anne have some elegant and distinctly Cunard features upon their exterior, including the iconic Cunard funnel and the addition of the curvy Queen's Grill directly below, that wasn't enough to convince me. She is by no means and not pretending to be an ocean liner, and is very much a cruise ship. I would perhaps daringly argue that her interiors are very much like an ocean liner. Now, I wasn't expecting this on the inside. What I was expecting was a tacky veneer version of elegance and Cunard heritage. But while on board, I was surprised to be transported back in time to something completely different than what I expected. Hello, my name is Matthew and welcome to my channel where I try to relive the glory days of ocean travel through vicarious video experiences. And sometimes I throw in a commentary like this one. If you like any part of this video, please press that like button. It helps me out a lot and makes me feel all warm and cozy inside. And press the subscribe button. It costs nothing, it helps me out a lot, and it gives you more ocean liner content like this. Before I delve into the reasons why I became a believer of modern Cunard, I would first like to thank Scott and Catherine Gray of the San Pedro Visitor Center for making this visit and therefore this video possible. Scott and Catherine were once travel agents, owned and operated a shop aboard the Queen Mary for a number of years, and have founded the San Pedro Visitor Center to help visitors to San Pedro achieve the fullest experience possible with countless resources and events in this charming and eclectic port city. Links to their website in the description below. Also, special thanks to the sponsor of this video, Pacific Coast Sleep, which I will talk about at the end of this video. Here I give you lads the first reason why the Queen Elizabeth is a step above the typical cruise ship. It was recently brought to my attention on a Facebook group page called Ship General Arrangement Plans and Drawings that Cunard rejected the initial Vista class design the Queen Elizabeth was originally going to have. For a little bit of background, the Vista class was first introduced back in 2016 with the Carnival Vista. This structural design was inspired by the Panamex container ships efficiently designed to be big enough to carry many containers, but small enough to fit through the Panama Canal while also meeting certain required maritime guidelines, including gross tonnage and ship shape and functionality. Link to the Vessel Requirements PDF in the description. For cruise ships, they formatted the design to also include a number of unique guest amenities. According to this Facebook post and the articles following, the Vista class design, also intended for the Queen Elizabeth's running mate, Queen Victoria, was not quite suitable for Cunard's vision of British class luxury and maritime heritage. They wanted more suites and more features that made Cunard uniquely Cunard. Like the iconic Queen's Grill restaurant, lounge and terrace featured directly below the ship's funnel. And what was to be the original Queen Victoria is now P&O's Arcadia. They spent a lot of time designing the original Vista class Queen Victoria before their custom fittings, and I think that is very noble of Cunard to do, and is just the first characteristic that makes these ships more than your typical cruise ship. <laughs> When comparing the exterior design alone with Arcadia and the newest Queens, is there really a big enough difference to compare them to a classic ocean liner? No, not just no. But even subtle differences make an impact, and that's definitely the case for the Queen Elizabeth. At first glance, the changes look pretty insignificant overall, just a few cosmetic shifts. But these are so much more significant, certainly in person, than it appears to lead on. 
Complementing the iconic Cunard funnel debuting on QE2 back in 1969 is the traditional red, black, white hull. Admittedly a feature Holland America already has done on their ships for a very long time, which already makes something of a difference in her appearance. More elegant, more refined, and authenticating the overall experience that much more. Traveling to the upper decks of her superstructure and when met in person with the Victorian era solarium style glass webbed skylights covering the garden lounge, I had huge Lusitania Mauritania vibes. It was like being transformed back aboard one of the original garden lounges these ships were built with back in the brink of the Edwardian era, but with a pool. Still speaking of her appearance on the outside, while the curvy glass railings resembled that from Princess Cruise Lines, the combined effects of the beautifully crafted Victorian Edwardian era style decor that paid impressive respects to the great four stackers we all know and wish we could see and sail on in person, alongside the signature Cunard funnel and formal British atmosphere again outside, even the exterior design brought me out of the supposed typical Vista class design she was based off of. And this leads us right into the unexpected delights of her interiors. I have been aboard the Diamond Princess, pre-COVID, and was surprised at how classy, graceful, and charming it was. Some of the Princess ships totally have classic ocean liner vibes to them. It was that same surprise on a different level when entering into the Grand Lobby of the Queen Elizabeth. Instead of a typical five-star luxurious modern hotel decor and atmosphere you'd see on something like Seabourn, no offense to Seabourn of course, it was more like a typical five-star luxury hotel in 1910. The Titanic-inspired Grand Staircase landing was much to be desired when comparing to the original Titanic, but the fact that the shape was there, but in Victorian form and expounded upon, really oohed and awed me. And that was just the beginning. Accompanying this grand staircase is the 18 foot tall handcrafted marquetry panel made of nine different types of veneered wood. A nod to the famed Sunray portrait currently aboard the Queen Mary in Long Beach featuring every type of wood aboard the ship. This huge and beautifully detailed portrait features the original 1938 Queen Elizabeth, one of the biggest ships in the world, as a lot of us know, and an absolute legend of maritime history altogether, saving the war by almost a full year, according to Winston Churchill in her troop-carrying days. All throughout the ship is a beautiful fusion of Victorian, Art Deco, and even Rococo, like in the velvety blue infused Royal Court Theatre at the bow. This three deck high space completely blew me away. It felt so much like the Palais Garnier in Paris, giving me romanticized Phantom of the Opera vibes. One of the most immersive spaces aboard that gave me some of the most sincere classic ocean liner impressions, besides the garden lounge on decks two and three, was the Britannia restaurant at the stern section which looks strange and unsymmetrical in the deck plans, but in person feels like what you would see aboard an ocean liner from the 1930s, even with near identical columns from the Queen Mary's first class dining room. It also has sandblasted glass panels depicting classic liners of the past, something still mostly intact aboard the Queen Mary, hugging the eight decks of the original tourist class stairwell etched by celebrated artist Sigmund Pulitzer. All throughout the ship are very thoughtful recreations of artworks aboard famous liners of the past, and purposed in very applicable ways. Like the decorative Map of the Atlantic painting, originally created by Macdonald Gill, recreated from the first class restaurant aboard Queen Mary that adorns the Café Corinthia on deck two. On the top decks are a series of artworks by Giancarlo Impilia illuminating what it was like to enjoy the same sun-kissed activities in the glory days of ocean travel. Even the quaint and fairly simple Churchill's Cigar Lounge includes some yesteryear charm. The musty aroma of previously smoked cigars, a nostalgic photo of the Lusitania in one corner, it made me wonder what the atmosphere must have been like in the much larger, much grander, first and tourist class smoking rooms aboard the Queen Mary. And the Queen Elizabeth for that matter. 
The Commodore Club is an enriching homage to the legacy of Cunard, with majestic commemorative style paintings of famous Cunard liners from the past, while the Yacht Club, along with a beautiful Victorian style parquet floor, a complimentary round window filled shape and oversized chandelier, houses a very detailed model of the original Queen Elizabeth. One thing I want to emphasize about all this decor, which surprised me greatly, was that it did not feel kitschy at all, but beautifully integrated. And while we're on the subject of vintage integration, let's talk about an amenity that the Queen Mary in Long Beach currently lacks in her current state, apart from COVID, of course, and that is the atmosphere aboard. As well as the general shipboard services you receive on an active sailing vessel. On a Cunard ship, we want that classic vintage ocean liner experience. And that is what I experienced on board the Queen Elizabeth, even as an onlooker. This included the fact that this ship was launched by Queen Elizabeth II herself, the same person who launched the original Queen Elizabeth in 1938 and later Queen Elizabeth II in 1969. Her custom-painted portrait hangs impressively by the entrance to the Royal Court Theatre, proudly displaying just how British and deep in British and Connaught heritage this ship is. Now there are potential drawbacks to this unique traditionalism, and one of them is perhaps needing to wear a suit and tie or a fancy dress after 6 p.m. It is required aboard, which might turn some people off, and being a Southern California born and raised young man myself, it definitely would take a little bit of getting used to, apart from today, of course. But for those of us in the ocean liner community, I think we would welcome the experience. You have afternoon high tea in neoclassic Cunard Fine China with their special Cunard English breakfast blend tea and white glove service. Princess Cruise Lines has the same amenity, but it's not the same as an authentically British ship like the Queen Elizabeth. Or, included in your fare, even the 1938 Queen Elizabeth marquetry panel in the Grand Lobby was created by Viscount David Lindley, the nephew of Queen Elizabeth II herself. <laughs> With all the praise from this wannabe British but more American than he wants to admit tourist, let's talk about some of the cons based on some of the reviews I have seen. This is arguably a pretty small matter, but it's a matter all the same that has been addressed, so here goes. Cunard has been criticized for naming all their ships with the Queen suffix. On top of that, a criticism has been made that Queen Victoria was christened by Camilla Parker Bowles, the current Duchess of Cornwall, not a reigning monarch, like a Cunard ship should be christened by. One criticism that I kind of share with are the small spaces that look a lot bigger in the pictures on board Cunard ships. I found this particularly disappointing in the My Fair Lady-esque library, though the spiral staircase was a very nice touch. This is something I understand, but it can subvert expectations and take a bit of adjusting for your eyes and for your perception. I had this same experience on Queen Mary 2 when I got to visit her back in 2006, especially for one of the largest passenger ships in the world. But this was due largely to the thick and durable construction of the ship so she could handle rough Atlantic weather, so I can't really blame them for this. Now, I know I'm going to contradict myself here, but it's more of a conundrum than anything, so take it with a grain of salt. As impressive as I discovered the interior space aboard Queen Elizabeth to be, there is still a certain synthetic feel to the interior that I've heard said before, but was summed up very nicely in a YouTube comment on a video about the interior design of Queen Elizabeth on Kennard's YouTube channel that read, Looks great, but there is still something missing in these new ships. The interiors still seem to reflect a casino style, albeit a nice casino. The RMS Queen Mary in Long Beach has a grandeur that these newer ships lack, yet I can't point my finger on exactly what, why this is. And I couldn't help but understand and share in this strange phenomenon. I think this has a lot to do with how ships are manufactured nowadays. Queen Victoria, Queen Elizabeth, and even Queen Mary II for that matter, don't have real wood veneer since it has been illegal to do so since 2010 for safety reasons. These ships use real marble and real glass, but there are elements of plastic and plastic infused material which probably make elements of these ships feel a little off. 
certainly when comparing them to grand liners of the past. It's true, they don't make them like they used to, but with modern requirements and limitations aside, they still make them pretty classy. And white glove service. Lifeboat drill time! And now, a word from our sponsor. If you're searching for a new mattress, look no further than to Pacific Coast Sleep. My mattress was over 15 years old and I knew I needed a change, but I didn't know where to go. So my family directed me to Tim Jones at Pacific Coast Sleep. Tim kindly and courteously helped me to find the right mattress for me. And what I finally decided on was the M. Lily Dreamer. 10 inches of layered smart foam for my health and comfort including a cooling knit fabric cover to maintain body temperature throughout the night, hypoallergenic ventilated bamboo memory foam that resists bacterial growth for a healthier and cleaner sleeping environment that also fights odors. Not only did Tim provide me free delivery on my new mattress, but he also took away my old mattress and box spring for free as well. Use my name, Matthew Richards, or Adventure OC to get 50% off your next order. Give him a call and tell him I sent you. I might not get 7 to 14 nights on a mattress aboard a luxury cruise ship like Queen Elizabeth, but with Pacific Coast sleep, I can certainly pretend like I am.